Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. We try to cover as much server and workstation stuff as we possibly can if we can get our hands on the stuff. And that kind of leads us into what we're taking a look at today. Today we're taking a look at a new Sapphire Rapids board for these new Xeon CPUs. This one's from ASUS. This is the ASUS Pro WSW790 ACE. It's an absolute monster of a board, and believe it or not, this is the entry-level board from ASUS for Sapphire Rapids. What we're gonna do today is our usual motherboard thing. This is an overview and not a review, and we do these videos so we can get an understanding of what physically is on the board and what comes in the box with a brand new motherboard. We run through all the features and everything that makes this board tick without actually firing it up, and I've got a reason why. I'm not going to be doing that anyway. It's because the way to install the CPU on this board is a little bit different. We'll be covering that in a build and review a little bit later. But strap yourself in and let's take a look at this new Sapphire Rapids board for these new Xeon CPUs from Intel. All right, ladies and gents, here it is, the ASUS Pro WSW790 ACE. Let's get that motherboard out of the box so we can take a little bit of a closer look at everything that comes with this motherboard, and there's not that much. First up, we've got the motherboard layout guide. This is excellent because it shows you what everything is and where everything is. There's also this silver round plastic device that nobody knows what it is in 2023. There's also the manual. Now, this will help you get started if you've never built with this board before. It'll also show you some configuration options in the BIOS as well to get you up and running really, really quickly. There's also some CPU carriers. These are required to install these Xeon CPUs into the socket. In another video, I'll show you how this works. It's a little bit different to what you're used to. There's also a single SATA or SATA cable for your 2.5 inch SSDs or those spinning RAS drives. And lastly, there's an array of, you know, spare M.2 pads and, you know, there's that breakout connector to plug in all your front panel cables to switch your system on to let you know your system's up and running. And that's basically it. There's not a lot that comes with this board. So let's take a closer look at the W790 ACE and everything that's on it. First up, we've got the front panel audio header. There are three buttons here. There's a flex key, which you can assign anything to, a reset button. There's also a postcode LED screen to help you diagnose your system. There's a PWM fan header. There's a serial port header on the board as well. That's because this board has built-in IPMI, so you can connect to it via serial. There's a USB 2.0 header. There's also a BMC header for VGA, if you wanted to plug VGA in as well for that output. There's also another USB 2.0 header, some more PWM fan headers, and the front panel connector for all of your connectors. There's three slim SAS connectors for storage drives. There's four SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives, a right angled USB 3.2 front panel header, a USB type C header. There's another PWM fan header. This is PCIe power for the board. There's also two 24 pin power connectors because you can connect two power supplies up to this board. There's another PWM fan connector and then a closed off EPS power connector. Let me explain to you how this works. First of all, like I said, Depending on the CPU, you can connect up to two power supplies and those connectors are covered up and color coded. The same thing applies with the EPS connector. The gray one is the primary and the black one is secondary. There's two more PWM fan headers along the top edge of the board and two more EPS power connectors, meaning they are, that totals four EPS power connectors on this board for CPU power. There's also another PWM fan header next to the PCIe slots. There are five PCIe slots in total. Four of them are full by 16 PCIe Gen 5, and there's one PCIe by 8 slot, which is also Gen 5 on the board as well. This board features the W790 chipset, which supports Xeon W2400 and 3400 CPUs. For power delivery, this has a 12 plus 1 plus 1 phase power system with really chunky heat sinks along the whole top edge of the board. We've got one where the IO cover is, as well as that really big meaty heat sink along the top edge of the board. Now, 
This board uses Intel's LGA4677 socket and it is only compatible with the CPUs I mentioned earlier. Let's open up the socket just to show you how this works. The way the CPU mounts is to the cooler and then the whole cooler and CPU with those carriers are dropped into the socket itself. As you can see, there are a lot of pins. So if you're building with a board like this, you need to be very, very careful that you don't bend any. If we flip the board over, you can see that there's not a whole lot going on back here, but the back plate for the socket itself is huge. Huge. I just wanted to show you guys how big that is. For the memory configuration, this supports up to eight DDR5 RDIM modules, so that's registered ECC memory, up to two terabytes total at 6800 mega transfers. For storage, we'll just pull off the heat sinks for the M.2 slots. Because you'd probably use a storage card for this board, there's only two M.2 slots. They're both PCIe Gen 4x4 M.2 slots on the board. There's one below the chipset heatsink, and then there's one next to the RAM modules on the right-hand edge of the board. It also features these new plastic clips that we're seeing on a lot of these newer boards to mount M.2s. For rear I.O., we've got a clear CMOS button, we've got a BIOS flashback button, there's a whole bunch of USB ports it's got quite a lot. There's also 10 gigabit ethernet, 2.5 gigabit ethernet. This board also has IPMI, so you can assign one of those for IPMI, which is remote management. It's got a USB type C port and a full 7.1 digital surround sound with optical and SPDIF output and an integrated IO shield. B-roll time, let's go. <laughs> All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the overview of the W790 Ace from Asus. This board is very, very interesting. It's got a few little things that I kind of like. One thing that really stood out to me was all the PCIe slots are PCIe Gen 5 by 16, except for one. This slot down here is a by eight slot. Obviously it's by 16 sized because most of these workstation boards just have full size slots, but yeah, this is just an insane looking motherboard. And as I mentioned in the intro of the video, this is the entry level board. The next one up is the Sage. I really tried to get the Sage, but the thing that makes this uh, a bit more interesting is this board is not big. Like when we've seen Sage boards for stuff like Threadripper Pro, they've always been EATX or AEB boards, but this is not that big. The thing is, all this stuff is really, really cool. But if you're interested in this kind of stuff, that's where your whole perspective might change. Because if you're interested in the ASUS Pro WS W790 ACE workstation board, it's starting at around 899 US dollars or around 1,849 Aussie dollars at the time of filming this video. Absolutely insane. But when you're buying something like this, you know what you're getting yourself into. And I just think that these HEDT boards and these platforms for these workstation things are just so interesting to me because you may or may not know in my professional career before YouTube, this is the stuff that I was touching every single day for both server and workstation stuff. And for me, it's just interesting because I feel like it's a throwback for me getting to play with the super high end stuff. That's why we cover that stuff here on the channel as well. It's because I just love the ridiculous high end, the unobtainable stuff because it's just very, very cool to me. But let me know what you guys think. We do have a full build with this board in the Fantex Enthu 2 Pro Server Edition coming very, very soon. 
we're just waiting for RAM to rock up because as mentioned earlier in the video, this does use RDIMM, so regular DDR5 memory will not work with this board and CPU combo. I think we're gonna be using a Noctua cooler as well, and I'm gonna show you guys how to socket these CPUs because it is a little bit different to what you're expecting. Anyways, guys, if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there, down below somewhere. Subscribe, please do that. We appreciate that very much and like the video and share it around if you thought this was interesting. I'm rambling now. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. I'm definitely peeking and seeking some very, very cool workstation stuff. I'm so keen to use this. I think the plan for this is gonna be, I think I'm gonna switch to Intel from Threadripper Pro for a little while for my editing PC and then we'll do like a long-term review of what it looks like to go from something like Threadripper Pro to Sapphire Rapids and vice versa and whatnot and where the strengths and weaknesses are because the Threadripper Pro CPU I've got is similar in spec to the one that I've got for this board. Stay tuned and subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks for watching.